Well, hey guys, my name's Dimitri and I'm a current English language tutor and today I'm going to be analysing a formal document for you. Uh, in particular, it's actually a North Korean travel warning document by the US government. Um, now, I came across this article in my endeavours uh, for finding some information on how to travel to North Korea. Um, don't know why I really want to go there, I think it's really fascinating, um, but that's beyond the point. The point is that I found this article and I thought that it would be a perfect piece for students to analyse because of all the formal linguistic choices that exist in this piece in order to achieve the persuasive purpose as well as the informative purpose too. So first of all, you can find the article in the um, description below uh, and uh, you have a read through it in your own time. I highly recommend you do that. Okay, so let's first go through the article. I'm going to discuss a few things that, uh, that show formality, that show persuasion, that show seriousness, authority, credibility, and reputation. So, you'll notice that in the first paragraph, um, it actually explicitly says, the Department of State strongly recommends against all travel by US citizens to North Korea. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't say, don't go. It just says it strongly recommends. So this is actually a negative face need uh, that basically means it avoids the US government imposing on your freedom rather it gives you a choice so it says strongly recommends against so it's not saying don't go but rather you know this is your choice okay you'll notice throughout the piece that oftentimes it repeats the uh, lexeme unauthorized uh, particularly in the third and fourth body paragraph it repeats it about one two three I think about seven times um, and the purpose of repeating unauthorized over and over again is to reinforce the idea that as a US citizen in North Korea, you will have restrictions placed on your liberty and on your freedom. So what do, you, what do US citizens value? They value freedom and liberty. So by putting a lexeme that opposes that freedom, people are more likely to be persuaded in not tra traveling to North Korea. Uh, so this is actually known as lexical repetition, which actually comes under cohesion. It's actually a form of cohesion uh, because it reinforces the main idea to the audience. Uh, and the audience, uh, the main idea here is that you are restricted in terms of your freedom. Okay. In addition to that, formal documents, in particular this one, often have what we call elevated lexis. So this basically means it's lex uh, lexemes that often are French and Latin based. Uh, and they often uh, reinforce ideas of seriousness, authority, uh, expertise, uh, credibility. So what you would actually do in your commentary is you'd say that the use of elevated lexemes uh, actually creates a sense of seriousness around the topic and it also can be linked to the situational context of this piece. So this piece is actually on um, a US government website. So the document is naturally going to make use of standard English in order to convey that credibility and to uphold the reputation of the US government. Um, if they were to in, uh, use informal language, the problem with that would be that it is ambiguous as well as um, not showing that authority and expertise that's required in this type of document. So an example of elevated Lexis, which often comes from French and Latin based origins, uh, include application, detention, depart, uh, accidental, intentional, uh, arrest, detained, imposed, all these words which sound very serious. Uh, that actually leads me to our next, next point which is the semantic field. So in this particular document you'll notice that the semantic field is of punishment, it's of um, prosecution. So th words like uh, detained, arrested, imposed, espionage, unsanctioned, unauthorized, criminal, uh, criminal laws, things of this nature creates a sense of punishment which therefore appeals to that persuasive technique of restricting on your freedom and also causing a sense of uh, a feeling of risk uh, in, the, in, in the possible traveler. So again this further persuades people from not going because of the fact that they feel it's too risky to make, to make the uh, journey to North Korea. Okay. Another thing you'll notice uh, in this particular piece uh, is that they, the logical ordering is so important. Uh, so in terms of coherence and cohesion, many students make the mistake of being too general. So what I mean by that is they basically list the features of coherence and cohesion in their analytical commentary and just link it back to general, to general observations, such as uh, the use of paragraphing in this text allows the author to break up the ideas appropriately so that they can be understood 
uh, in the most appropriate manner. Now, this is correct, but it's way too general. That can be applied to any text in the world that has paragraphs to achieve that appropriate interpretation and intelligibility. However, in this particular piece, you've got to look at the logical ordering in terms of how the government is wishing to persuade you to not go to North Korea. So first of all, you'll notice that the first one, two, three, four, five paragraphs in this particular document talks about the negative aspects of North Korea, like restrictions of freedom, arrests, detention, um, you know, torture, things like this, which highlights the idea that you have the restrictions, so therefore achieves that persuasive purpose. It's really only in the um, in the sixth paragraph that the US government starts to give you some form of info regarding how to contact the Swedish embassy there, um, how to uh, how to get in contact with the government if a problem happens. Um, but the reason they do that is because they don't want you to attend. They don't want you to go to North Korea, so they put that last. They don't put that first. They don't give that prominence in this particular piece. Um, we'll finish off by looking at the cohesive adverb. So in the sixth paragraph, um, there is a cohesive adverb that says, however, the DPRK government routinely delays or denies consular access. So basically in that entire paragraph, the cohesive adverb, however, creates a contradiction with what is in the rest of the, in the previous part of the paragraph to say, well, basically, yes, you can contact the Swedish uh, embassy if you have problems in Pyongyang. Uh, however, um, this may not actually happen. So again, it reinforces that that risky nature of traveling to North Korea, which further achieves the persuasive purpose. So there you have it, guys. There, these are the key um, ideas that I've identified in this North Korean travel document. Um, by no means is that definitive, but um, your task now would be to go through it, and I'd recommend doing a commentary on this piece to practice your uh, formal language uh, commentary skills. Thanks, guys.